My name is Marcus Graham. I'm the writer, director, animator, editor, and a number of other things behind Papa's Sonata. Papa's Sonata is an 18-minute combination of animation and film to tell the story of a father whose job is to build homes for others, yet fails to realize his own home is slowly falling apart. And I've been working on it for the past four years, and it's set to be released June 30th. When I was young in primary school, I kind of started off doing comic book, uh, little comic books during reading time. And uh, I did this one about a... Uh, a uh, penguin, it was kind of just a rip off of Pengi, and I did this one about a group of ninjas in my class and all the different classmates were different ninjas. And from there it was kind of just evolving from doing comic books to uh, doing PowerPoint animations to doing flash animations. So there was never really like I got a start per se, it was just more like I had an interest in film and I, it was just something I kind of taught myself how to do. I think, I think with animation, it's like you have a bit more control over, over the elements. With film, you're kind of a bit more subjected to what the actor is going to deliver to you at that point. And that was a big difficulty I had transitioning from animation to film. Just, uh, you know, with animation, you're used to a character hitting this mark on this exact second and giving this exact reaction on this second, and then this other actor coming in and delivering their line. And with animation, well with film I kind of had to strip all that back and really give the characters a bit more room otherwise you get these robotic performances as a result. It is, it is kind of a control thing. I, I do like the aspect of like having control over the final product, um, like a, a very high amount of control that you can't really get with film. Film has a bit more uh, spontaneity, a bit more freshness, which can be interesting and cool. Um, really for me it's not necessarily animation over film. I'm always interested in combining the two in new and different ways. I guess, I guess for me, like, I really do love animation, I really do love film, and I really do love how they can take these ideas in a confusing world that doesn't, you know, you know, this confusing world that doesn't really make much sense and is all mixed up, and to see an idea represented in film so perfectly where it's like, I, I get that, that's how I feel inside, that's really what gets me excited. And for me, I guess what inspires me a lot with animation and film is I've never really been that good with communication, I've never really been that good at articulating myself, and film is kind of, and animation is kind of this avenue to really um, get, an, get ideas out there and communicate with people in, in, a, in a way that is, I, I think, more powerful and, and, and better in a sense than, than talking. There's more substance to it. For me, the, the main difference with animation and film is like if you want to take a character and, and shoot them walking across the street, let's say you bring your camera out and, and you shoot it, it'll take like maybe 10, 30 minutes. With animation, it's like if I want to have that character walking down the street, that's going to take, I mean, depending on how detailed I want it to be, maybe a whole day. Um, so I really have to uh, be a bit more uh, patient in a sense. And, I, and a big part of animation is also, you know, the actor in a film is kind of the one that prescri like prescribes what motions he's going through, what he's thinking at a time. You know, you never, never really have an actor just walking down the street, they're thinking about something, you know, maybe they got out of a bad relationship, or maybe they're coming home to see their loved ones. And as an animator, you're kind of, your job is to prescribe that action to the character. You're kind of, you become the character in a sense. I think like the most challenging thing working on a film like that's you know takes four years is just kind of waking up in the morning and recognizing you have all this work ahead of you and just trying to kind of take it all in and not you know freak out. I, I, the way I kind of think about it is you know if you're working on a small team with a small budget and you have to take all these different roles on, um, it's easier to work on it piece by piece instead of just, you know, some people multitask and that's fine, but I really just try to focus on each individual element, thinking of like each thought as a car trying to go down a highway and if you're trying to process all these cars at once you know it gets blocked so really what I try to do is just focus on each element so if I'm writing I'm just writing if I'm animating I'm not animating all these different things at once I'm just animating this one section and once I get that happy once I'm happy with that then I move on to the next and I feel like that really helped me not go crazy in the end because it's very easy to look at a big project and get overwhelmed um, and for me, I, I just try to focus on each individual section. Uh, Will Smith has this quote, and I'm going to paraphrase him horribly, but he says something about like, you don't build a house all at once, you build it brick by brick, and I think that relates to film a lot. Well, I think with animation you don't really have that freedom as well to like change things about too much. You really have to be kind of set in stone. With film you have a bit more freedom to be like, oh, we can go and do some B shoots or whatever, we can go and do some pickup shots. But with animation you really do have to be prepared, otherwise you're going to be in for a lot of work. Um, so with Papa Sonata I overprepared. I did about one year of just uh, figuring things out, figuring out, sorting everything out so I'm just not wasting everyone's time. And 
Uh, from that, I think things went a bit smoother, but then as a result, like, because I'm still new to things, there was a few hiccups along the way. I think like, as I said, I wouldn't recommend people spending four years on a film. You'd be much better off doing uh, like four films in four years than one film in four years. I want to be honest with people. I don't want to tell them that like, I, I did some like glamorous or cool, th like I'm cool for some reason for doing a four year film. It's really a stupid thing to do. And like, I really, but that's something I really want to make clear to like people, people out there who might be thinking to get into their own project, um, to really just do something within your capabilities, within your limits. I think with any camera will do, they really provided a platform to get the sound side of things up to a new level. Working with John Harsek was really a cool experience. And um, yeah, it was cool to, you know, get up on stage and, and pitch and, um, you know, with a bunch of like-minded people. When I went to John Harsek, I pretty much already had all the sound in place. He just kind of took the sound to another level um, with mixing and mastering and getting everything kind of tightened up. One mistake I made with the sound design is um, that I learned working with John is I actually did too much sound design in a sense. I over did the sound. So when I was working into it, because I have this perfectionist mentality, uh, I, I kind of thought like every object has to have a sound, every item needs to have a sound related to it. And so the car would have like 50 tracks of like the sound of the tires as they turn, the sound of the tires on the ground, the sound of the engine rumbling, and then the sound of the engine roaring up and all these different elements. And John took a look at it and he's just like, this is too, too much. <laughs> and so we really, a lot of what John did was actually just stripping back the stuff I did. And a lot of what I learned with sound is that it's a lot more kind of, um, it's a lot more kind of less is more in a sense, if, if that makes sense. It's, uh, you, can, you can get away with um, just using very bare elements to tell a stronger story in the end. And so what I had was a bit cluttered and John kind of stripped it back a little and focused on the main sections that really mattered, I guess. Okay. I guess like part, part of going into Papa Sonata um, and working on the music, because it is such a musical film, part of what I didn't really think about is that I'm not just making a film, I'm making a whole fucking album. And that was a whole big undertaking under, under itself, you know, getting the music done and getting it professionally recorded and mixed and mastered. And yeah, it was a really cool experience because um, we kind of made the music to the music is kind of, the edit is kind of around the music in a sense. It's almost, the film is almost like a musical in a sense. The music is a completely original score uh, done from the ground up uh, for, for the film specifically. So completely original. Yeah, nothing, nothing really came, came easy with the film. You know, starting out, uh, uh, you know, I'm still trying to make a name for myself as a director. And so a big part of making the film was just rejection after rejection after rejection. I went through so many producers, so many uh, different people to try and get the film made. And it kind of really came down to, I was like, well, I'm gonna really have to take on a lot of these, these roles myself if I want to get this done in the end. And so that's what I did, and now we're here, here we are four years later. I kind of expected, you know, working on four year, for four years on a film, there would be this like big relief at the end, uh, this big like sigh, like this weight off my shoulders, but really there wasn't that. It was kind of just like this gap where it's like, holy crap, what am I gonna do next? Um, and fill it up real quick, what's the next project? Um, I, I had a lot of hope for Papa Sonata, and I think it is a good film, but I did screw myself over a bit by making an 18 minute animation. And I, ca I came to realize that most festivals really accept one to five minute animations. I think the film is it's genuinely great. Obviously, I'm biased as a director. I have to think it's great. Um, well, I don't have to, but you know. Uh, so I, yeah, I, I think uh, I, ha I haven't had that yet so much, but um, maybe when the film has its online release in June 30th, it might find an audience. Uh, if not, next project. <laughs> That's how I go to work, I guess. The whole film has this combination of 3D animation, 2D animation, and these characters in live action, live action silhouettes of the character that are put into the world. So really, all the characters are in these color key body suits that I, um, it's kind of like the opposite of a chroma key, where you're not chroma keying out the background, you're chroma keying out the characters to capture these silhouettes. And um, yeah, and then it's like, they're in this whole kind of world that's got this watercolor style that I've done with multiple different layers composed into this 3D space. Uh, like multiple 2D layers composed into a 3D space. Um, 
And yeah, I mean, I think I think it's a cool film. It, it might not be for any everyone, and that's one of the big struggles I really have as a director. You know, if you, I don't think I'll ever really make a mainstream film, as like hipsterish as that might sound. But it's just this kind of difficulty where if it's like if you want to make a mainstream film, like I feel like all mainstream big budget films are kind of bland and kind of have to have all these like focus groups kind of deciding how they're built and they have to appeal to everyone and I'm not really looking to make films that appeal to everyone um, so my you know they'll definitely appeal to a certain group of people a group of people that I mean my, my idea is just to make films that I think are cool and if I think they're cool maybe I'll find someone else who thinks they're cool and maybe they'll find someone who thinks it's cool and just kind of trying to stay true to myself in a sense. I do relate with the father, the main character, quite a bit, and his his kind of struggle of of putting uh, managing work and family, and that kind of balance of trying to um, you know build a career, but then also manage all these other aspects of your life. And I feel like that's an element a lot of people can relate to. So I think with with all films, there's a bit of yourself in there. Uh, with animation, maybe a bit more. Like we're growing, we're going to a point where I think we're seeing more of kind of like a personal cinema where it's like you have these people who have the ability to write, direct, animate, and do the whole thing themselves. Um, M. Dot Strange being a great example, he, he did a, a We Are the Strange and a couple other things where he animated the whole thing himself and he like voiced most of the characters um, and he just did it in his basement, you know, for a couple thousand dollars. And so I think, I mean, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't recommend that for everyone as well. Like I think it really is important to collaborate with others and, and build and not just work alone. But now we are, with the advancements in technology, really able to create these films that are kind of these personal little bubbles. We're starting to see these stories that couldn't have been told, you know, decades ago. We're starting to see a lot of more kind of niche media where it's like we're, it's specific topics that we couldn't imagine being seen years ago, but now they're here. <laughs> I think like in order to expand, it is like incredibly important to collaborate. It's how you grow essentially. And um, yeah, I, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's really, I, I guess a film is kind of like a baby in a sense. And in order for a baby to grow up into a man, you have to, you know, give it to teachers. You have to let it go in a sense. You have to be able to let it go out into the world and, and grow in a sense. And I think film is, is very much similar to that. I mean, you can make a film where you do everything yourself, um, but the truth is you, can, you can't really be a professional editor, writer, director, anime. You can't do it all. You know, you, there's people who have worked their whole lives as just an editor. And I think it's really important to collaborate with others and get other people's perspectives if you lock yourself away and only you know and you if you lock yourself away and 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 and, and don't get others opinion you're kind of uh doing your film a disservice and you're doing your audience a disservice so it's it's important to to be open to other people's opinions i think if i was to give one piece of advice uh dan Harmon has this quote where he says if you're going to do anything creative for a living one of the hardest and most important piece of advice you're going to get is that you have to be doing it because you love it and you have to become comfortable with the possibility with the reality that you might be doing it you know in your entire life with no reward in darkness in silence and you know you have to picture a reality where you've done that your whole life for decades and uh, ask yourself at the end of that when you get hit by a bus or however you die if you're gonna die thinking I blew it or die thinking at least I did what I loved and if the answer is the latter then keep doing it and to go on from that I'd say like a lot of people, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say I'm a typically successful life, like I'm living with my parents, I don't have all the answers, but what I'd say is, um, you know, a lot of people measure success by the three elements, money, fame, power, and I think, uh, to me, if you're out there, you know, doing the film you want to make, you know, and you're struggling to get by each day and you don't have enough money to, you know, eat some days and, you know, there's a lot of hustle and a lot of work and a lot of blood, sweat and tears, but if you're out there, like, doing it, then you are successful in my mind. And you shouldn't let others dictate what your happiness should be to you. And I'd say like, if I was to give, I, knew, I could give so many different pieces of advice on, on what to do, but I, I think one, one big thing is just to recognize that you're not perfect and uh, to, to let go of your perfectionist sense. A lot of people idolize people like the Stanley Kubricks of our time who really made a name for themselves by keeping everything clean and technical and perfect and symmetrical and tight. And I'd really say like, uh, you know, recognize every script kind of starts with a rough draft. Every, uh, you know, every piece of art starts, pretty much every piece of art starts with a sketch. And, you know, just get something out there. Get an idea out there. Do it quick. Do it fast. Do it simple. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I, I'd say uh, 
you know, if you have this big ambitious animation idea, write a script, make a comic, do an animatic, uh, host a small local theater production, just fucking anything. It doesn't have to be big. Just start somewhere and just do it. And if you keep doing it, something will have to happen eventually. I mean, that's the thing with animation. It takes a significantly long time and you really have to be patient and a, and a little crazy to do it. Um, I think everyone who, who's creative is kind of crazy in a sense because we're kind of doing something that is, has, offers no security and maybe doesn't even offer any future whatsoever and is not paying any money and yet we're doing it because we love it. We love telling stories.